What's up everybody, welcome back. So today I want to take a look at a second grenade type, so we can use that to set up the equipment slot in our weapon wheel, so we can carry different uh, types of equipment and also select them. So we're going to start pretty simple and just add a second grenade, and later we can also start adding health packs or other equipment types. And so that's what we're going to do today. If you like the series, please consider leaving a like. And if you want to get your hands on the project file, you can become a member of the YouTube channel or become a Patreon. And then you will get access to the premium channels in the Discord and also a download for this project. So with all of that stuff out of the way, let's just start today's video. So first of all, there's one small fix from the previous video because I wasn't paying attention. And most of you probably caught it already uh, during the recording, but I'm going to show it in here anyway. So if we go to the widget blueprint weapon wheel, uh, the last time we added a truncate node to the text for the weapon damage in the weapon wheel. So that's uh, this text over here. Or we actually did it for the DPS and I accidentally hooked up the weapon damage to the wrong node. So if we go into the update weapon info current function, in here we have the text weapon damage for the weapon wheel. And uh, I also put a truncate node over here, but I accidentally connected it to the same node as the DPS. So we're now printing the DPS twice. Oh. And this node should be hooked up to the weapon damage. So we're going to plug in the damage over here and that should fix the weapon wheel. So uh, I was looking at my notes when I was doing this, so most of you probably caught it during the recording already, but uh, let's just make sure everything is correct. Um, so that's the little fix from the previous video, and now we want to start setting up the new equipment. Um, there is quite a big storm going on outside, so I hope I can record this without too much background noise, uh, but I don't really have another time to record it, so uh, it's going to have to do. Hopefully you guys don't have too much trouble from the background noise and the thunderstorms in the background. Um, so let's start with the new equipment and we're going to go to the weapons folder. First of all, I want to make a change to the uh, weapon info structure. So we're going to change the structure and we want to make sure that our project is saved before we do that. So make sure we save everything. And then we're um, actually not really changing a structure, by the way, because we're going to add something to the enumeration. But the enumeration is in the structure, and enumerators are a bit janky sometimes as well, so I tend to do the same thing with enumerators uh, as I do with structs when I update them. So just save the whole project, and then we're going to open the weapon type enumerator. And in here, I want to add a weapon type a throwable. So we're going to add a new enumerator, and I'm going to call this a throwable. So we're going to save the enum, and then we're going to close the project. So we're not going to save all of the other stuff. Don't save it. And then we need to reopen it. So let me grab the project in here quickly. And we're back. Um, so now that we have the enum updated, I want to make a new structure for the equipment. So I'm not going to add it to the weapon info structure because there's simply too many different variables and that will make it a bit messy. Um, so we're going to right click and go to blueprints and create a new structure. I'm going to call this my uh, struct for equipment info. And let's open this up. Um, so the first thing we want to add in here is the display name. So let's enter display name and we're going to make that a text variable. Then the second one we need is a static mesh. So that's going to be our equipment mesh. And we're going to set it to a static mesh, but we want to make it a soft object reference. So we're going to look for static mesh and then select our soft object reference. The next thing we need is the maximum ammo, so we're going to do ammo maximum, and that's an integer. Then we're going to add the weapon type enumerator, so we're going to call this the weapon type. No. 
And that's going to be the weapon type Enum. There we go. Um, then we need an equipment type. So that's uh, pretty much the same as what we did over here for the weapons. So for the weapons, we added a weapon class, and that's a text. Uh, I'm going to make the equipment type a name variable, because a name variable is cheaper to work with when we are comparing stuff, uh, like comparing uh, strings. Uh, it's not a string, but you get the idea. So if you compare two names, that's cheaper than comparing two text variables. So that's why I went for a name in this case. Um, so we want to add a new variable and call this the equipment type. So equipment type. In case we want to add different types of equipment. So turn this into a name. Then we also want to add a class. So we're going to call this the actor class. And we're going to make this an actor and then a soft class reference. So let's look for actor and then pick the bottom one so soft class reference not object but class then we need a hut icon so let's add that as well hut icon and that's going to be a texture 2d and again a soft object reference and then we need a bunch of floats so let's add the first one and that's going to be the damage so i'm going to add a throwable before here and then call this the damage no oh really there we go so we want to turn this into a float and then i also want to add the minimum damage so let's add a second float and call this throwable min damage almost there and then we need an inner radius and an outer radius so let's add two more floats and this is going to be the throwable inner radius and then the throwable outer radius there we go so we have the new structure good to go let's save this one and now we need a data table to go with it so let's right click go to miscellaneous and then create a new data table so for this we want to select our new structure so that's the equipment info structure uh, over here so i messed up the spelling as usually and let's hit ok so this is our equipment info table just like that and let's open this one up um, so we're gonna add two types of grenades in here the normal grenade that we already had and then i'm gonna make a second grenade that has an ice effect so i'm gonna call that the ice grenade and so let's add a new row and the first one is going to be the grenade normal So for the display name, that's simply going to be grenade. And then for the equipment mesh, we want to select our grenade mesh. So that's static mesh grenade from the Libra project. The maximum ammo, I'm going to set it to four. And then for the weapon type, we want to select throwable. Equipment type, I'm simply going to type grenade in here. And then for the actor class, uh, we need to get back to this a little bit later. So we're going to create child blueprints of our uh, grenade that we already have. And we can fill those in over here. HUD icon, we already have it for the normal grenade. So that's a uh, HUD grenade. And then we need to fill in our damage values. So I'm going to set the maximum damage to something like uh, 250. And the minimum damage to maybe 75. And then inner radius, uh, something like 150. Outer radius, 300 maybe. So you can play around with these numbers. Obviously, this is not set in stone. And so this is our normal grenade. And now let's duplicate this row. And we're going to create the ice grenade. So grenade ice. And let's give it the name ice grenade. So we don't have a mesh yet, so we want to change that later. Uh, maximum ammo 4, that's fine. Throwable is fine. Equipment type grenade is fine. We need to create the actor and we also need to create the HUD icon. So for now, this will have to do. 
So let's save our new data table and close it down. And we want to start setting up the actual grenade and the parent child blueprints. So let's start with the blueprint we already have. So let's go to the grenade folder. We have our BP grenade. So I'm going to rename this to BP grenade parent. So this is not going to be an actual grenade that we're going to use. Uh, we're simply going to use this as the parent blueprint and then create child blueprints, which are the actual grenades. Uh, but we do want to open this up and set up a bunch of variables in here. So if we go to the on component hit event at the end here, we have to apply radial damage with fall off. So for here, uh, we want to plug in some of our damage variables that we added to the data table. So let's promote these two variables. We have the base damage promote to variable. So I'm not going to bother renaming them. That's fine. Then we have minimum damage promote it as well and we also want the inner and the outer radius so let's promote those two variables as well there we go and then we want to go a bit down to the event on projectile stop and over here we have the niagara system so we also want to turn this one into a variable so let's drag off here promote to variable and that's going to be the grenade explosion so explosion and we want to do the same thing for the sound so let's promote it to a variable as well and that's going to be the explosion sound there we go um so we have these set up we want to go to the construction script of the parent grenade and in here we can set up some base variables so let's get a table row name or a table row, sorry. And we're gonna select our equipment info table. No. So this one. And for the row name, we wanna promote it to a variable again. So promote it, and that's going to be our equipment row name. There we go. And then we can break the structure and simply pull our damage and radius variables from here. So we only want to set the base damage the minimum damage and then the inner and the outer radius so let's make sure we hook everything up to the row found pin and connect everything together so the base damage is the throwable damage the minimum damage the min damage and then the inner and the outer radius there we go and so this is all i'm going to do in the parent grenade so let's uh, save this one and then we can close it down and now we're going to right click and create a child blueprint class so this is going to be my grenade normal and we want to open this one up and let's also open up our parent grenade so what i want to do um, over here we have the projectile stop event and I'm going to use a different FX for the ice grenade, and that's not a Niagara system, unfortunately. Um, so I want to make this event different for each child blueprint, basically. So what I want to do is simply grab this entire event from the parent grenade. So that's my on projectile stop for the projectile movement. And I'm going to cut it from here and simply paste it into the normal grenade over here. So all of these variables are valid because we created them in the parent. So all of that stuff should work. The projectile movement event should work as well. So we don't really need to change anything in here. Uh, but we do want to make sure that we set up our construction script maybe. Let me double check. Yeah. So we want to go to the construction script. And before we run the parent construction script, we want to set the equipment row name. So this will execute the get table row uh, stuff that we just entered. So we want to make sure we set the equipment row name before that. And we can actually grab that from the variables. So we can go over here, show inherited variables, and then they will turn up in the list over here. Or you can simply right click and then set equipment row name. And it will also show up over here. So let's set the equipment row name and this is going to be our grenade normal so this refers to the 
stable row name that you entered for the normal grenade. And then we also want to set the explosion FX and the sound. So let's pull in setters for those two. The Niagara system and the explosion sound. Hook them up over here. And after that, we're going to run the parent construction script. So make sure you hook that up as well. And so for the explosion, we had the grenade explosion from the Lyra system. So that was this one, the Niagara system. And the sound was a meta sound source. So I think that's MSS and then explosion grenade over here. So that's good to go. We can compile and save that. And now our normal grenade should work like it did before. Uh, we just have a, mm, a little bit of a different setup, basically. And so now we can start adding the ice grenade. So for our new grenade, we probably want to use some different effects. So I went into the Infinity Blade effects project and grabbed an ice effects. So it's not that those effects look to, uh, that awesome, but I just want to use epic content so I can release the project files and don't run into any issues. Um, so we've used this project before. It's the Infinity Blade FX project that's on the marketplace for free. And I just grabbed one of the ice FXs from here and migrated it into my project. And the one I used is Jump Smash Spikes double zeros so it's in the fx mobile ice folder so if you want to use the same one you can grab that one or use an fx of your own so we have an fx for the new grenade and we probably want to give the actual grenade a little bit of a different color so we can uh, differentiate between them so let's go to the grenade folder and then to the materials folder and we want to duplicate this material instance so let's duplicate it and this is going to be the weapon grenade ice so let's name it properly and if we open it up then we can simply change the color over here for the uh, team weapon tint so if we change this to a little bit of bluish for example and then hit ok then we if you go to the uh, in the plain view you can see the color changed over here so we now have a blue grenade so we can use that so let's save the new material um so sorry i got interrupted oh, i'm way too busy um so where was i we created the new material and now we also want to grenade uh, create a new mesh so let's go to the mesh folder and we're going to duplicate the grenade mesh so we're going to call this the grenade ice and then we can open this up and assign our new material so for the material instance over here select the ice grenade and now we have a blue grenade that we can use uh, instead of the other one and so we have most of the assets set up all we need now is a hut icon and we already have one for the normal grenade so uh, what you could do is just open it up and then make the grenade blue or you could uh, make a screenshot of the new grenade mesh and then remove the background. So we have the HUD icon grenade over here and if you open it up with Photoshop or something you can replace the color uh, or as I mentioned just make a screenshot of the new grenade and remove the background. Um, so then uh, after that we have all of our assets set up and then we want to create our child blueprint. So I'll make sure to upload the HUD icon to the Discord as well. So if you're a member you can grab it in there. And so now let's create our new child blueprint and I'm not going to create it from the new parent but I'm simply going to duplicate the child we already have. So that way I don't have to set up the event grab again. So let's duplicate the grenade normal. And this is going to be the grenade ice. And let's open it up. Um, so the first thing we want to do is change this spawn system at location. Because we are or I am using an old cascade system. So that's not a Niagara system. So we're going to change this node and look for a spawn emitter at location. So we can move over the pins in here for the location and the rotation and get rid of the old one. 
So you can promote this to a variable if you like, and then set it in the construction script if you want to use multiple grenades with the old cascade epic systems. Uh, so I'm simply going to select the ice grenade in here. So the jump smash spike ice. And then for the explosion sound, unfortunately, I don't really have another sound. So um, you could simply change the sound in the construction script over here by setting it. But I'm going to leave it as the normal explosion sound from the Lyra project. Um, so in the construction script, you can get rid of the Niagara setter. You don't need that anymore. And for the equipment row name, we want to turn this into the grenade ice. And then if we go to the viewport, let's change the mesh in here as well. So let's grab the grenade mesh and we're going to turn it into the grenade ice. And that should be pretty much it. So right now we should have a working grenade. So let's save this and close it down. And if we go to our hero character, uh, we can have a little test. So in here, we want to look for our throw grenade event. And in here, we're actually spawning an actor from class, and that's the grenade we're spawning. So we have the input action throw grenade, and then with uh, animation notify, the grenade throw event is called. And in here, we have the spawn actor from class, and we're spawning uh, our grenade parent right now so that's not going to work because it doesn't have a projectile stop event so it doesn't explode when it hits something and so in here we can simply select our ice grenade for now to test if it's actually working and then in the next episode we're going to start setting up our equipment inventory on the character and make sure we can actually switch between different grenade types and so let's compile and save it and have a quick little look so we can test it solo that shouldn't really matter and start a game so if you could load some of the textures that would be nice oh for are you kidding me oh freaking okay this is new so i'm gonna reboot and i'll be back Okay, I'm back. Let's see if it actually works this time. So let's start again. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Um, so we don't actually have the new HUD icon and stuff because we don't have that set up yet. But right now, if we throw a grenade, we should at least have the new FX. And you can see the mesh of the grenade we throw is actually blue. So it does change. And if you go back to the hero base character, so this is just the physics asset stuff or the uh, simulate physics stuff. So if we go back to the hero base character and then you can select the other grenade type in the spawn actor from class node to verify that's working as well. So the grenade normal and then compile and save it. And hopefully we can test it without crashing this time. There we go. So now we should go back to the normal explosion. There we go. So we have two grenades added. Uh, it's a little bit of a shorter video, but I'm just too busy. So I have to cut it off right now and I'll be back with a second video later this week. And we're going to set up our equipment in the character. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like and I'll be back soon for more. Talk to you later guys. Bye bye.